Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this video, we're in this mission, we're going from Earth out to Jupiter with the eventual goal of landing on Io with the XR2. But we won't be taking the XR2 all the way to Jupiter. It doesn't have the resources to do that. So we'll be taking the uh, we'll be taking the XR2 up into orbit to dock with the Aero Freighter. Uh, I'll state again, the Aero Freighter is not available for Orbiter 2016 for general download. Uh, this is just a beta that I'm helping test, so currently we can't get it, unfortunately. But um, we'll be docking the XR2 with the Aero Freighter, taking the Aero Freighter out to Jupiter, undocking the XR2 and landing the XR2 on Io. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. And I will say this is actually my second time report recording this part because I forgot to switch camera views last time and I recorded the entire part with the without being able to really see what was going on. So I'm redoing it. But the, uh, I guess the benefit for me at least is that I now have one more um, test under my belt of bringing the XR2 up into orbit. Now I don't actually remember if I saved after I set up the resources. It looks like I did. Okay, yeah, everything's topped up. All right, so, um, and what I said in the last video was that I... Uh, couldn't get the cam, cam uh, com nav stuff set up for the aero freighter and i looked at the cfg files and it doesn't look like all that stuff is configured for this version so that's one thing that might be missing so we won't be able to do that but we'll still be able to dock i have an idea for it even if it's a bit of a cheat uh, but it'll have to be an acceptable cheat because um, we don't have uh, we don't have docking information but what i might do what i'm going to do after I'll try to contact Dimitri to see if he has a way to uh, if he has an idea for how I can do it like the normal way but if not we'll we'll do a little bit of a docking cheat but we'll get really close um, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it I also put in um, launch MFD or I activated it so we're gonna target the arrow now Target equatorial inclination is lower than your latitude and you heard that, that the target's equatorial inclination was lower than our latitude. And I think all that means is that we can't get a 0 0.00 um, uh, relative inclination because of our current launch site. But we'll still be able to get really close. Uh, I have my flight stick in front of me, so we're pretty much ready to go. So all we have to do now is warp time forward until the relative inclination is as low as it will get. And then we'll take off and fly a heading of 98 degrees. So let's warp time forward. And I think, uh, so from the last video, again, that I messed up because I didn't switch camera views, I saw, I saw it around 3.6 was the lowest, so now I know that. So we're just going to continue warping time forward until we get about to that point. And what we'll do, I'm going to come out of time warp now because I know we're getting really close. Well, I'll go down to 10. All right, there it is. It just flipped, so it's, it flips. So f every second that goes by now, it's going up. And the fact, it just went up. So let's uh, quickly turn on the APU. Let's turn off external cooling. Using onboard O2. Turn off AF control. Gosh. Turn on AF control. And we're ready to go. Let me just, uh, so 98.4, I don't need that anymore. And let's bring this up and switch our mods over. All right, so we have projection ship. We have PEA, APA, so we're good. And now I'm, let me just go down to 0 0.1 so I can think. Because again, every second that goes by, the relative inclination is going up at this point. So I think I'm ready to go, and anything I'm forgetting, I guess I will have this view open so I can keep an eye on the temperature. I don't have to worry about it too soon, but it, it will become something we need to keep an eye on. We will try to do a scram ascent, and uh, all right, I think we're ready to go. So back to normal time, uh, full power on the main, and we're gonna climb up. I feel like I'm blasting the speakers with the volume, so let me turn that down. Hopefully that's better. I don't know why it's it's not adjusted correctly. I'm not sure why. So there's our V1 call out. So we'll be able to get rotate here. And there's our rotate. So let's pitch back and throttle back just for a moment. And we're going to 98 degrees. Let's buzz the tower as we go by, just for lulls. Full power on the main. So 98, so I rolled out a bit too soon. And the reason I did that is because on the last uh, recording I messed up, I rolled out too late. 
so this time I overcompensated but we're going to just a little bit past 100 all right let's start rolling out about right there and let's pitch up aggressively and I overshot a little bit there but uh, we'll see if we can make this work if I want I can um, we're just gonna fly this profile so there's Mach 1 so we're gonna get to around uh, 18 kilometers at the po at the time when we level off so this color can change now we'll just go to green so relative inclination coming down and I'm just letting the nose of the vessel pitch down normally because again we want to be around about 18 kilometers I would say I don't know exactly what the right number is but somewhere between 15 and 20 by the time we are leveled off so so there's 15 so let's go ahead and start pitching those down so that by the time it's uh, leveled off we'll be around you know 17 18 kilometers and this will just help us build up horizontal speed so that we can uh, make full use of our scram engines so there's Mach 2 so very soon here we'll be switching over to scram just as soon as I get vessel pretty much leveled off and let's just roll out so our relative inclination is coming down all right let's open the scram doors so there we just burned out our first fuel module cut the main engines go full power on scram and pitch up a little bit just we want to keep climbing and all right so everything is looking okay now I'm checking again to make sure I've switched camera views it's annoying I've done that a few times where I record an entire video only to realize I never remembered to switch camera views but yeah there's something going on with the sound uh, I have the volume mixer set how I normally have it but it's still just absolutely blasting the speakers but luckily I, I, I turned down the volume level of orbiter in the recording software but it's still like I said in my ears it's really loud all right so just paying attention to the temperature uh, my usual profile has me getting into the yellow zone and kind of trying to hang out there near the yellow take a sip of water while we're climbing up here so we're just watching our relative inclination temperature starting to climb pretty quickly so let's go ahead and pitch back a little bit just to make sure we keep temperatures under control relative inclination coming down 22 kilometers basically in altitude Ooh, let's pitch up even more getting really close to red here we're gonna get a uh, hull warning if we if we don't watch it but I don't want to pitch up too fast because then we're just gonna uh, overshoot essentially so now the temperature is starting to go back down so I'll start to uh, drop the nose a little bit try to stay here in that yellow zone uh, if you want to be safe uh, I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing what I'm doing maybe keep the temperatures a bit lower but a long time ago I've said this in other videos but a long time ago I heard that you get maximum efficiency out of the scram engines if they're red hot I don't think I've ever independently tested that so that might be malarkey <laughs> so just rolling the vessel ever so slightly to the left to keep that relative inclination down at a negative number we're about 35 kilometers almost at altitude 2.6 K meters per second temperature slowly climbing up actually temperature slowly going down so we're okay right where we're at so we're just gonna continue to fly as we are at the moment I might roll just a little bit more to the left try to bring down the relative inclination just a little bit faster on the last flight I saw that I was able to get down to around 3.5 so we will have a plane change maneuver to do once we get into orbit but uh, I'm going to try to plan on doing that as part of my rendezvous 
because I think it'll be cheaper because if I just do a plain, you know, just a straight pure plane change in low earth orbit, plane change equals expensive. So we'll, we'll try to minimize that cost, although I probably won't go into a bunch of calculations to ensure that it's at its absolute lowest cost, but, uh, but we'll do what we can to, you know, not like intentionally spend more than we have to. All right, so how are things at? We're just over 4,000 meters a second in velocity, 45 kilometers coming up on 46, relative inclination coming down currently at 3.55 degrees, temperature starting to climb a little bit, and the vessel's getting really close to uh, not having any vertical speed, so I'll pitch back a little bit to keep that temperature under control, plus make sure that we continue to climb. Checking my scram temperatures, I'm currently almost 20%. I'm going to go ahead and start climbing out now because I want to make sure that I'm closer to 70 kilometers by the time we run out of scram fuel. So we'll go ahead and start climbing a little bit faster now. That'll bring down our temperature. And so we don't really have to worry about temperature anymore. Scram's down to getting close to 10%. We're at 50 kilometers, climbing 200 meters a second. So we're at f almost 5,000 meters per second in velocity, 51 kilometers. Relative inclination still coming down. Now we're at 3.42. That's even lower, I believe, than I saw the last time I messed up my recording. So we're almost out of scram fuel. We're about 55 kilometers. We're climbing at a pretty good rate, though, so that's good. So we're going to turn off the scram engines here, or close up the scram doors here in just a couple more seconds, and switch back to main engine. Scram fuel depleted. Close up those doors. Full power on the main. And now we're just going to continue our ascent. Primary thing we're going to watch now is our uh, our velocity, and try to arrive. Uh, try to have engine cut off somewhere around 70, somewhere between like 70 and 80 kilometers. So 5.5 k meters per second. So we have about 2,000 meters per second still to gain. And relative inclination is still negative, barely. So still coming down just a little bit. So we're 65 kilometers, climbing 180 meters a second, 5.8 k meters per second velocity. So since we don't really have to worry about temperature anymore, I'm going to go ahead and switch now here so I can see my, my information better. We're going to go for an apoapsis of about 300 kilometers. Uh, part, the part of the planning could have included where the aero freighter was at in its orbit around Earth, but I didn't take that into consideration. So if we keep a relatively low orbit around Earth, we will uh, orbit the Earth much faster than the aero freighter, which means rendezvousing will have, will have more opportunity. So let me go ahead and bank a little bit to the left, try to make sure I keep that relative inclination negative. So about a thousand more meters per second worth of velocity to gain. We're at 72 kilometers, almost 73 climbing. And so really soon here, we're gonna have to start paying real close attention to our apoapsis. Uh, once again, we'll go for about a 300 kilometer initial orbit. I think that'll be good. We could do 200 like normal, but we'll go for three. So coming up on orbital velocity here really soon, so we'll start backing off the main engines shortly so we can keep tight control over our initial orbit. So we're at 75 kilometers. That's a pretty good altitude to be at, I would say. 7.2. So all eyes now on apoapsis. See how our orbit's coming together. Backing off the main. And once we hit about 280 kilometers APA, we'll cut main. So backing off the main engine so we have better control. Backing off the main engine some more. Right about here. So we are we cut the engines uh, somewhere between 280 and 290. Uh, somewhere between like 280 and 295. But with the, the fact that the uh, XR2 has lift, and we still have, uh, like I've said in so many videos, at this altitude we still have some dynamic pressure. So we will still continue to gain um, 
actually it looks like our altitude our APA is going to go down a little bit so that's a bit different usually when I go for an APA of 200 I, I actually continue to gain altitude at this point but that's fine well we have lots of opportunity to to dial that down if it's important and it's really not even in that important we're very close to our target altitude but if we really want to be picky about it we can throw in a bit more main and I guess maybe if we overshoot it a little bit then as that number goes down ever so slightly we'll actually be at our target apoapsis so we're going to hold this attitude but for now we will switch over to the uh, to this view so I can open the radiator and I'm looking very closely to make sure I'm opening the opening the radiator and not the scram doors if you saw that video what a disaster that was so radiator is opening and we'll go ahead and turn off surface controls and whenever that animation finishes, we will close up, uh, turn off the APA, uh, the APU. All right. So what do we have? So what do I always say? When we get into orbit, when we get into our initial orbit, the most important thing is to stay in orbit. So we want to uh, see when are we going to get to our apoapsis. That's going to be in 1900 seconds. Technically, we will pass the descending node first, so we would have an opportunity to do a bit of correction on our relative inclination, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, it, it would cost us a 27 second burn at the descending node, 26.99 seconds. I don't know off the top of my head how much delta V that is, but it's not a short, it's not a little amount, it's quite a bit. I think we can do better than that if we just plan on doing our plane alignment at the same time that we raise our orbit out to the um, out to the altitude of the aero freighter. So that's going to be my plan because I just I just feel like that has to be better. So let's get to apoapsis. I guess we can finally switch to orbit. Uh, well, one thing we can do since we did burn through one of our fuel modules, let's get up a little bit higher. We might have even burned through both of them. Let me get above entry interface. We still have 1800 seconds to apoapsis. We have plenty of time. So let's get above entry interface. So let's go for like 130 kilometers, at least 120. And, you know, there we are basically. So let's go back to real time. And again, I was going to do this earlier. I forgot. So since we did burn through one of our fuel uh, modules. There's no point in carrying it along with us. So we're just going to go ahead and open the payload doors and discard it so that it will go around and burn up in the atmosphere. So we'll turn on the APU and time warp, speed up that animation, turn off the APU for now, and let's just verify. So this one, so they're both empty. So they're both at 355.2. So they're both empty. So we're just going to deploy that one and we're going to deploy that one. That will lighten up the XR2 a little bit, which will make orbital maneuvers a little bit cheaper, and we won't be carrying, you know, an extra uh, 355, I think it was, so about 700 grams, uh, kilograms of mass to Jupiter for no good reason. Turn on the APU, close, close up the doors, time warp to speed up the animation, back to real time, turn off the APU. All right, now back over to this view. So somewhere those modules are floating around. We won't worry about them. Uh, we'll go ahead and speed up time, get closer to apoapsis. We'll circularize our orbit, and that will be the end of this video. So we're 900 seconds, 800. We're pretty well pointed towards the uh, prograde, so we don't have a whole lot of correction to do there. So we'll get really close to the apoapsis. And just for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and use the prograde autopilot. I guess we can try to help it a little bit. So a little bit of control thrust in that direction. That way, by the time we get really close to apoapsis, we'll be almost exactly lined up. All right, we're getting pretty close. So let's go ahead and bring up burn time calculator on this side. Make sure we select time to the apoapsis, circularize, and that's going to be about a four and a half second burn. So let's get really close to apoapsis before we turn on the autopilot. 
and with that little bit of correction I did there you can see that it's going to have us really close to lined up and we'll go back to real time and turn on the autopilot now and it just had to correct by just the tiniest little amount and we'll go ahead and uh, time warp just to speed this part up because I would prefer my video to be less than 20 minutes but we're going to be just over All right, that is the circularization burn complete. Eccentricity is down to 0 0.000 with three decimal points of precision. So that's gonna wrap it up for this part. Let me actually do one thing though. Let me switch to the aero freighter, which I think I can do with control F3. And the reason I wanna do that is I just wanna make sure that I keep transects open anytime I save my plan. Because if you save a plan, Whenever you save a plan, it saves the MFDs that you have. And if you don't have Transex up, then the plan that you created in Transex gets lost. Not the end of the world. We could redo it. But we, it just it's, uh, makes things a bit easier if we, if we save it as part of, our, part of our scenario file. So Control S and switch camera views here. Um, I got a new keyboard and I use macro keys to switch between scenes. And my old keyboard would switch scenes flawlessly. This one, I'm having to press that button multiple times sometimes. If I can't get that sorted out, I'm probably going to end up sending back this keyboard. Because I don't like that. But it may just be the way I have the macro software set up. So that's going to end uh, this part of the series. So when we come back, we'll see what we need to do about do uh, rendezvousing with the Aero Freighter. And... And, and at some point here, I'm going to have to shoot Dimitri an email and find out about that docking thing. But if I can't get that figured out, it's not the end of the world. We have options to dock with the Aero Freighter, um, even if we can't do it uh, using our MFDs. So with all that said, uh, leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video.